Let's say you're a small government person. How, how do you win that argument? Who's going to pick it up? Well, the churches will. Really? Church attendance is down. Who's going who's to believe you? Who's gonna believe, do you believe the politicians? Oh, yeah, well, I, really? Do you? Smaller government will only come through huge changes in our each individual lifestyle. Big government will go out of business when it becomes obsolete. Don't destroy something. Creatively destroy it. Put the film business out of business by coming up with digital photography. Don't go try to destroy Kodak. Do something great. Creative destruction. Put it out of business by making it obsolete. We have the power to do it through education, by feeding the hungry, by giving someone shelter, by sharing, by restoring love. Love is not just a feeling. It's a verb. It's a verb. I have been looking at this problem since 9-11. I have been trying to search for the answers for, I mean, seriously, I really thought, it was probably seven years ago, we're toast, man. All the way along, I said, okay, here's, here's an exit ramp, an exit ramp. Nobody would listen. I'm out of stereotypical, easy, or political answers. I got none left, none. None of them will work. I do this for a living. I take my job seriously. It's not a job. I'm a watchman on the wall. I think that's the first time I've ever said that out loud to you. I take it seriously because I believe in God and what he says about watchmen. If they see something and they fail to say it, then the blood of all of the people that they could have alerted will be on their hands. That's why I do this. I don't... I don't have a choice. <clears throat> but it's a great blessing. But while I was trying to disprove these things... <clears throat> and couldn't, I was also simultaneously looking for answers. All of the answers, all of the stereotypical stuff, politics won't solve this. Before I came on the air today, I just had a meeting with members of parliament, the EU parliament. I've had many meetings with people that you will find out about in the coming weeks and months. I spent my time with them asking how I can help them. They asked me, do you think there's a way out? I said, I can't speak for your country because of your country's, because your continent's records. I know who Americans are, or at least who they used to be. We have a fighting chance. We'd gladly join you if we can help. But I have a very different approach. It's the only thing, the only thing that I think will work. It's not kicking the can down the road. And that is, we have to be a force for good, a force for honor, a force for courage, a force for love. I've studied revolutions in the last seven years. They always go the same way. And there is a window. It's a short time to act. I will tell you that one of the smartest men I know 
who I won't rat out because nobody knows he talks to me. The smartest man I know. He called me. I was on vacation. He said, Glenn, the window is closing. I've been looking for an exit, both political and familial, but they're not there anymore, and they're getting worse. Words don't mean anything anymore. The trust gap is widening. The world is getting darker and blacker, but it provides us with an opportunity, a profound opportunity. I grew up in Seattle, and I've said this many times before, that, that the shadows, I, I didn't see shadows in, in the Seattle area. Shadows are the darkest when the sun is at its zenith and the sky is the brightest and it's right overhead and there are no clouds in the sky. I grew up in Seattle. I was like four days in my whole childhood like that. When I moved to Texas, I walked down the street. I think it was Arizona, actually. I walked down the street and I saw shadows and they were so dark. There is the hope. The shadow proves the sunshine. So now... We know light is growing, and it is powerful, unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. So now what do we do? Let me show you another way. <laughs> Went to the Diamond District today. I'm going to walk over here. See this? You see it? Pretty remarkable, isn't it? Okay. Let me put it up. This is what they always do. You go, to, you go to some, you know, jewelry store, and they always do this. They're always like, oh, no. And they put it right on something very dark. Oh, look. Look how beautiful it is. Isn't that shiny and beautiful? But you'll notice what they also do is they put them always under the light on a black source and then they put a whole bunch of them together and you're like by the time you get out of there you're broke because your wife is like pretty shiny I've been hypnotized we have the opportunity can you tell the difference between the velvet and the diamonds can you tell the difference at all which one do you want because I'll give you one you want the diamonds or the velvets very nice would you want the velvets Huh? No, you don't want the velvet. You want this. Shiny, pretty, right? Security, get the diamonds. We have the opportunity to not be the velvet, not be the darkness, but to be the light. And it's always much more remarkable when there's a big pile of it. I suggest you work on your facets. I suggest that you show your true colors. I suggest we get together. GBTV, the truth lives here.